Hey everybody, I know it's been a long time since I published and recorded my last video, which I think at the end was like, oh, I wanna do a Ask Me Anything because I'm close to a thousand subscribers. And I think uh, when I checked, now I have like 1300 and yeah, it's been a while. Um, as you can tell, uh, I'm in a actually a new apartment uh, that took up so much of my time moving. I totally underestimated that. And uh, my best friend got married in August and I was the maid of honor. So there was just so much going on um, in the summer. And then also in August, I just had like a string of bad luck, I guess. So I managed to move in here on time, but the landlords were having work done in the bathroom and the shower doors are missing and they're still missing. Um, so luckily I can kind of shower in the tub and just not spray things, but then the bathroom plumbing clogged and the plumbers needed to come. That was kind of nasty. Uh, my washing machine died like three weeks in. So then I had to suddenly go buy a new washing machine. My MacBook Pro cracked, like the display cracked. And I was like, seriously, <laughs> no, why? Um, uh, I actually went to the Apple store to get it repaired. And I signed a release for 650 euro repair. Uh, but when I went and picked it up, it said zero. Like it said, oh, it cost over a thousand euros, but I owed zero. And I was like, really? And the Apple store guy was like, just run, just take the computer and run, leave the store before the number changes. I was like, all right. And then on the way back from the wedding, um, I got a crack in the windshield from like a tiny rock from the uh, Autobahn. So more money. Um, I think what it did teach me though, is that I am super, super grateful for the life that I have um, because all those things happening at once, I can afford it. It really sucks, but I can still afford it. And for many people, it would mean uh, rent. Uh, I know that feeling because I used to be a failed entrepreneur. Um, but yeah, I don't know. A lot of people were like, like, this sucks, Julie. And I'm like, I know it does, but I can't do anything about it. So anyway, that's one of the reasons why just I've been kind of really offline um, and unable to record any videos for you. Okay, so because my climbing plans uh, changed tonight, I just want to do a quick sort of AMA video. Um, so I'm going to try to answer some of the comments that I have been receiving. So I'm going to read them aloud here. Um, and then try to give a sound by answer. So G Voden asks, uh, any tips on Terraform credentials in AWS? Storing them in parameters in Azure DevOps seems convenient, but not sure how auditable or safe that would be. Um, so as I work for Microsoft Safe, of course, yes, we do it. I use it as well. Um, credentials in AWS, I don't know, because I work for Microsoft. Um, but the convenience part, yes, it is convenient. There are other ways to make it a little bit less convenient and thus indirectly more secure. Um, so if you look at my DevOps governance repository uh, project, I have actually all the credentials in Key Vault, right? Um, and the only service connection that is stored in Azure DevOps as a managed service is the ones to access that Key Vault. And those particular credentials have this tiny scope, all they can do is read that key vault. So yeah, that's my quick soundbite answer. So Andra asks, can you do a video on Azure YAML end-to-end -end pipeline incorporating secrets from key vault and building a VM using Terraform and configuring Ansible? Um, so YAML end-to-end -end with um, key vault, yes. If you look at my DevOps governance repo, you'll see that it is YAML pipelines and the um, God mode service principles are actually stored in an Azure Key Vault. Um, there is a tiny uh, service connection, which basically is a wrapper around a service principle that only has read access to that Key Vault. And that really tiny scope service principle um, is saved in Azure DevOps. Um, for the part about Ansible and configuring VMs, I tried that like a month ago and I failed. Um, I couldn't get it working. So I'm not an infrastructure person and unfortunately I bounce around from projects. 
Uh, but when I figure it out, uh, unfortunately it's not high on my priority list. Um, I will make a video for you. Thank you. That was a good question. Kevin Oliver um, writes, uh, started learning Terraform earlier this year, then learned about Bicep. It's such a joy to work over ARM templates. I absolutely agree. ARM and JSON is horrible. Bicep is better, but I still like Terraform. Anyway, um, so he continues and says, would it be possible to do a video on CD best practices? Topics like at what level should you be targeting your deployments? subscriptions or resource groups and deploying infrastructure during the deployment phase. It would be nice to know, to know your thoughts on pipeline design. Should a pipeline target a single repository or one pipeline for the whole application target multiple repositories? Thanks for the great content. Um, and always nice to have a deeper dive than hello world. Thank you, Kevin. It's much more fun to do deeper than hello world. Um, so your first question about subscriptions and resource groups, there is, um, I think it's in the cloud adoption framework, but there is one page that has a good explanation about um, governance basics and kind of how you can leverage cascading your RBAC permissions um, by subscription and resource group design. Uh, so, you know, resource groups are generally scoped to your application lifecycle. Um, so, you know, don't go all out in resource groups, but don't, you know, you should still use them as well a little bit, but remember subscriptions are higher, so you can leverage sort of cascading. Um, I deploy to both. Um, it really depends on your security requirements. You could theoretically do everything in one subscription. Um, if yeah, you don't have those requirements. So deploy infrastructure during the deployment phase, the deployment phase of what the intro or the app. Um, the thing about infrastructure that is always kind of like, ooh, don't want to touch it, is that it's the underlying layer. And generally you deploy it once, like for an application, and then it's there, and then you might do some configuration management using infra as code. Um, so I'm assuming you mean that, but uh, let me know exactly what you uh, your question is, then I can answer it better. Uh, pipeline design, how many repositories? Um, how many repositories is generally going to be very specific depending upon your application. Are you running a monolith? Are you running microservices? Um, and as well, uh, how many people are working on this project, right? So I've talked about layers of infrastructure before or layers of an application. You have, might have an infrastructure layer, which is managed by a completely different team. You have an application layer maybe you, that you can control, or maybe you, you're in a startup and you do all of it. Um, so if you wanted to, you could put it all in one repository. Obviously there's pros and cons for that, which I guess I probably cannot answer in the soundbite and I need to make a proper video for. Uh, very good question, uh, Kevin. I almost said Oliver, but that's your last name. Very good question, Kevin Oliver. So Mike Dunphy asks, one of the things that a Terraform pipeline task gives you over a bash task is the ability to pass in service connection information. Am I missing something? Is there a way to pass in service connection to the bash task that I am not seeing? Um, so the service connection, right? It's just a wrapper around credentials. Um, and if you look at those tasks, so those being any tasks under the hood, the source code, you'll see that it is also just accessing those credentials. The nice thing about service connection as a, as a wrapper is that you can apply permissions on top of it so that not every pipeline can access particular service connection. Um, you don't have to use it directly, like in a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Um, in my Dev DevOps governance project, you'll see that I have a service connection to access a key vault. This service connection, which I manually set up, so I manually set up the service principle, has no rights, pretty much, except to read that key vault. Um, and the key vault actually has the credentials that are used for infrastructure as code. So it's a little bit of an indirect way, but it's not the only way. I think the biggest takeaway would be to look at the source code for those uh, tasks and see what they're doing. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's a little. Yeah, I prefer Bash because yeah, I can see what I'm doing, exactly. Good question. Okay, so Rodolfo writes, great video and great content. I have a doubt though about what you said about code will actually run when you open a PR. What I noticed is that Azure DevOps pre-merges the branches and runs the pipeline on that pre-merged code, since the YAML is part of the code. Um, so when your pipeline runs, it's actually running the code that is in that commit, but it's in a headless state. It's not pre-merged, right? It's just kind of, okay, I push this chain, I'm gonna run it. It has no relationship to a branch yet, um, especially since you're opening a pull request, it's not getting merged into it per se. 
But yes, it is exactly running that code. Um, that's why you know it's really important what is in that pipeline uh, before that uh, new branch is forked off to open the pull request. Um, so how do you prevent some of this? So if you look at my projects, you'll see that I have many pipelines and any pipelines that generally do a deployment, um, I will often write uh, PR none, so no pull requests. Um, there are separate pipelines to run just uh, so CI, right? So continuous integration, running tests, checking the code quality. I really like spaces, I hate tabs um, and things like that. So those will run uh, when you're doing a pull request. Now pull request number, although you can automate it to a certain extent, you really do need to have humans look at it. Um, in German, you say vier Augen Prinzip. I can't think of it, what it means in English, but yeah, you need like multiple pairs of eyes looking at something. Um, and yeah, so you prevent it by A, doing PR none on the uh, YAML file so that when somebody pulls something, if they can't really quite do that or it shouldn't trigger it. Um, and uh, the CI platforms as well, I wanted to add. So I think GitHub by default, if somebody forks your repo and they're not in your organization, when they run a, a pipeline after that, they won't release access to the secrets. You have to be a member of that organization to open a pull request that will get access to that secrets. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, configure all your Git repository settings. Sorry, sound by answer. I really have to dig into the de de details. Um, but very good question, Rodolfo. Uh, in one of my Terraform videos, Jason Content asked, have you done a tutorial on how you set up different Terraform folder structures and service connection import details? As someone quite new to Terraform, this would be quite useful to know. Um, so in that video about the multiple clusters and the make files, um, I do actually go into that, um, how you have one repository that actually talk, talk, blah, 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 talk, blah. I'm tired. Uh, how you have one repository target multiple um, deployment environments. So in that one, I think it's dev staging and production and how you do that, probably you, you're going to have to use a combination of branches um, as well as folder structure. So branches, because that's one way to toggle which pipelines actually run. Um, and then folder structure in terms of the configuration, if I want to compare my staging configuration to my production configuration. I don't want to flip branches to see that and still have different folders. Um, if you watch that video, you'll see that I have one folder just for um, variable configuration. So there's somewhere defaults, right? But in this folder, I think it's environments. Um, there's like a dev.tfrs, there's a staging.tfrs, and those are when you override things. And I think this week um, I updated the dev cluster, so the Kubernetes version. Um, and then I just changed that in the dev, dev TFRs. And I think there's another folder for the backend configuration that stores the Terraform state. Um, and those files are configuration files with actually credentials, secrets to actually um, get access to that state file. Because remember, state files have um, secrets if you generate any um, or if you pull any down uh, in plain text. So you got to make sure that, that is secure. So uh, yeah, that's kind of a sound by answer. I'll link, uh, I'll send you a link to that video and hope that um, that helps clear things up a little bit. Okay, thank you, Jason. That was a very good question. Thank you everybody for asking your awesome questions. I'm sorry if I missed yours. I probably have because I'm terrible at using this, this app and I miss things. Many of you have written in just to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, it really motivates me to continue putting time and energy into this. Um, I was in the office today, so I actually have my badge. Uh, but on the back of it, it says, uh, our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. So even though this is not my full-time job and I do this more or less in my spare time, um, it's fun to be able to help people um, across the globe, regardless of whether or not you are a Azure customer, regardless of whether or not you are one of the customers that I um, help out. And so this is fun. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have to stop now because I'm tired. I'm feeling my voice kind of going. Um, the questions that I miss, I'll try to maybe make a video sort of next week before I go on holiday. So I am going to be away for two weeks. I'm hoping to travel uh, to Italy, which is not too far from here. Um, and in terms of Corona, it's still kind of okay. 
So yeah, uh, if I manage to, maybe I'll make another short video of what I'm currently working on. Some of the stuff is kind of interesting, um, but I probably won't get to do any tutorials in the coming weeks. I'm hoping to get shower doors though by then. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you like this, subscribe to get more. Um, coming soon, coming soon, promise. I promise I will finish moving in soon and uh, after vacation, it's gonna be winter again anyway, and so it'll be cold and I'll be here at home in my new home office uh, making videos. All right, thanks a bunch and see you in the next one.